Hello everyone, my name is Braden Girard and today I'm going to talk to you about how we can follow some best practices for using cron jobs inside of Strapi. So in Strapi version 4, you can easily create a built-in Strapi cron. If you go to your config folder, you can make a new file and you can just call that file cron tasks.js and then inside of that you will export so we'll do module.exports the name of your cron so whatever we want to call it so we'll call this post count email because what i'm going to do here is i'm going to set up a automatic email to get sent to me every so often letting me know how many posts have been published maybe i want to make sure that you know my content creator is putting out enough posts so i get updated emails every day or every week to tell me how many articles have been published. So I'm gonna call this post count email and inside of here I will make a task and that's what the strappy cron will actually run. So that's gonna be async because we're sending an email and then we get the strappy object here so that we can access our models and whatnot. And then we're gonna put our task body in here and I'll save some time here and I'll copy that code over in a second. And then the other thing you wanna do on this is you wanna have an options property and that options property needs to have the actual cron rule. So how often we want it to run. So in this case, we're gonna say rule, and then we're gonna say, we're gonna use the cron syntax. So it'll be star. We're gonna, in this case, we'll do it for every minute. So we'll do star forward slash one, and then four more stars. You can look up the cron syntax to figure out how to adjust this to be hourly or weekly or daily, but this will run it every minute. So we'll do that for testing purposes. So we have that set up. I didn't make this equal to that. There we go. And then, so this will run every minute, like I said, and then we just put our task body in here. So I'll paste that in. What I'm gonna do here in this task is I'm gonna say, get me all of the articles. By the way, I have the default strappy blog template here. So this is has models with articles in it. So we'll get all of the articles and we'll get the count for those articles and only if the publication state is live. So only if the article is published. And then we're gonna take that count and we're just gonna log it out here saying sending an email with this count. And I'm gonna put run by strappy cron just so that we can tell the difference after when I show you how to also implement cron in a different manner. And then we're gonna try and send the email and then we'll catch the error if it fails. It's going to fail here because I have a fake email input here. So I just have this commented out for now so our logs will stay clean, but typically this would log out an error saying, you know, can't send to this email or something of that regard. So we have our task cron here and now we can activate this cron. So in order to do that, you have to go over to the server.js file. And then in here, we add a cron property and then we will say enabled is true and then we will say what we want the cron property to run so we give it the tasks that we want it to run and in this case we're going to import cron tasks so we'll import cron tasks from that cron task file that we just made and then comma here so our cron will now be enabled and it will run whatever is in cron tasks so we can now run this We'll do an npm run strappy develop. Now I am running this inside of a GitHub code space. So I'll actually be able to access this publicly on the internet. So we will forward the port 1337. Let's set the visibility to public. And then I can open up this address. And we can go over to the administration side if we wanted to, or we can just go here and we can see that everything's running. If we go back over, we should see our log outputs. So there's the request I just made. Cron ran right away when we booted up. So sending email with published article count five run by Strapi Cron. And if we give it another 30 seconds or so, we'll see that it's gonna log out the same message again. And then we can go and we can log into our admin. So let's get that ready actually. I'll we'll go over to the admin and we'll log in here. And then we'll go over to our content manager and we'll go to our articles and we will unpublish one of these. So we can see there's five published right now. We'll unpublish this. And now we only have four published. So if we go back over and check out our cron log, perfect timing, it triggered. So it's saying sending an email with published article count of four. So you can see this cron is running every minute right now and sending emails with how many articles are published. Now, this is how you do crons in Strapi. 
The only issue with running crons in Strapi like this is if you want to horizontally scale your Strapi instances. So if you need to have more than one Strapi instance running to uh, put under a load balancer or something like that, if you have heavy traffic, let's say you have multiple virtual private servers all running Strapi and you have a load balancer distributing the load across your different Strapi instances, this cron will run on all of those Strapi instances, which can cause all kinds of problems. And in this case, it would send out an email from every Strapi instance. So we don't want to receive if we have 12 Strapi instances running under a load balancer, we don't want, want to receive 12 emails. So what we want to do is we only want this to send once. So how can we accomplish that? Well, in order to accomplish crons with horizontal scaling, we don't want to use the built-in strap, Strapi cron tasks. What we want to do is we want to create our own route. So we'll go into our source and we'll go into our API and we'll go into the article folder and then into routes. Okay, so we're gonna make a custom route and then we're gonna have that custom route call. So we'll say zero dash custom dash article dot JS zero so that this route gets loaded before the built-in routes. And we wanna create a custom route that's gonna call a custom controller and then we'll call that outside of Strapi. And I'll show you how we do that in a minute. So for this custom route, module.exports equals and then we will say routes, give it an array of routes, and we're gonna just make one custom route here. So this route will have the method of get, since we simply just need to call it in order to trigger our custom controller, which will be our cron. We can give it a path, and in this case, I'm gonna give it the path of forward slash articles, forward slash cron, forward slash published count. And then we also want to give it handler. So in this case, we're gonna make the handler API articles dot articles cron published count. So we'll save that. And then we will go over to our controllers. We'll go into article.js and inside of article.js, we're going to add a custom controller in here. So the second property here, we want to add a custom controller. So we're gonna have a method here that takes in the Strapi instance. And then inside of that, I will paste in some code just to save us some time here, but this will be basically the exact same code that we had in our old cron task here. So we'll put that inside of here. So I'll paste that in and we basically have an async cron published count method here, which is what we specified in our custom route here to get called cron publish count. And that basically does the exact same thing that we just did in our built-in Strapi cron task, but it's called from a custom controller. So this isn't gonna get called by Strapi, this is gonna get called externally from Strapi through our custom route. So in order to do that, there's a couple different ways you can call that route externally. The first simple way, if you're on a Linux machine or you have a, a Linux VPS that you're running, is that you can use the cron tab to make a curl request to that endpoint. So let's just test this out to make sure that that endpoint is working first off. So let's do an npm run strapi develop, and then we'll just go over here and we'll try out that route. So we'll go forward slash artic API articles cron published count. And if we hit that endpoint, oh, we have an error here. Let's see. I cannot read properties of undefined reading cron publish count. Okay, let's take a look at our custom route. Oh, not articles, article. So we'll save that. And let's run this again. And if we go over now and test out this route again, we get a forbidden. Okay, hold on. My port forward here went back to private. So let's set that back to public. If you're doing anything in code spaces, that's a little thing you'll have to do if you're testing out these endpoints, API articles, cron published count, forbidden. Okay, now this is public, but we have to also go into settings in Strapi. We have to go over to our roles. We have to go to our public role and we have to allow that article cron published count to be public. You could set up an API key and keep it private. For this demo, I'm gonna set it to public so that I can hit it publicly. And let's try that one last time. We got an okay response back. If I go over here and look at our terminal, you'll see that I just ran it with the external cron. So my strappy cron still running here. I can probably disable that. Let's disable that just so we don't have a bunch of strappy cron logs. So we go up here to the server and we say enabled is false. 
I'll save that. And then we know that we can now hit this endpoint. So as I was saying, one way you could do this is you could in a, on a Linux VPS or on a Linux machine, you could go to your cron tabs. So you could do cron tab dash E and you can set up a cron in there. Cron tab's not set up on this box. Okay, so if you open up cron tab dash E in a code space, so it doesn't look like I can use cron tab, but on any Linux machine, you can open up cron tab dash E. And what that's gonna do is basically gonna open up a file for now, I'll just text file so you guys would see what it would sort of look like. You'd open up your cron tab file if you typed cron tab dash E, and then you would, in that file, put in the cron tab rule. So in this case, the cron tab rule will look similar to the rule that you have in Strapi. So I'll just paste this in here and you'll see you have your cadence here. So right now, this is one I have set to every five minutes. We'll, I'm gonna show you another way to do this in GitHub with GitHub Actions and GitHub Actions only lets you do every five minutes. So we'll do the same here for cron tab. So if every five minutes, call a curl with the dash S, meaning it's silent, so it doesn't output anything. And then we're gonna call that endpoint. And then when that runs every five minutes, it will call that endpoint with a get request using curl and trigger your cron just like we did in the browser. So that's one way you can do it with cron tab. If you were actually on a, a proper Linux box here, you could do cron tab dash E and set your set that in your cron tab. It would look the same as I just showed you when you just save your cron tab file. Now, another way that you can do it is you can create in your repository, if you have it on GitHub, you can make a folder and you can call that folder dot GitHub. And inside of that dot GitHub folder, oh, that's to be up at the root, come on here up at the root of the repository, the .github folder. And then in that .github folder, you can make a new folder called workflows. And inside of that workflows folder, you can make a new file and you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call this publish postcron.yml. That's a YML file. And inside of that YML file, I'll copy over some code here for you just to save some time. So in that YML file, you'll put some GitHub action code, some YAML code. So you give it a name, I'm gonna call it post count cron. When you want the GitHub action to run, in this case, schedule. So this is the magic here. It's gonna run on a schedule with a cron. And you can see here, we have a cron, same as what I put in my curl cron tab. And then I also added workflow dispatch. That just means that you can manually trigger this. So I'll, I'll do that so we don't have to wait five minutes. Uh, like I said, GitHub only lets you call crons at, at a minimum of five minutes. And then we have the uh, box that we're gonna run it on in GitHub actions, Ubuntu, the name of what's going on here, just to, uh, to give the step a name. And then same thing, a curl with a dash S command to that endpoint. So that will run every five minutes and call this command. So if we save this and we push this to GitHub. So if I open this up in GitHub, we can go into our actions section and we can see here that it hasn't run yet. It's only gonna run once every five minutes, but what I'll do is I'll trigger it manually here. So I'll run the workflow and we can see that it's running the post count cron and Nothing's gonna happen because I don't have my server running. Oh, I do have my server running, so awesome. Okay, so when that runs, there we go, it got a success. I'm 302 not found. Okay, that doesn't look like it succeeded. Let's see, over here, do we have anything? No, let's check our ports again, and it's back to private. Good old code spaces. All right, and we will rerun this job. Now again, since we set this up on a cron schedule, you don't have to run it manually. Obviously, GitHub will run this every five minutes, so effectively giving you a five minute cron. And when that runs, it calls that curl, and we should have, there it is, run from GitHub. So that's two ways that you can run crons outside of Strapi, and it would be recommended that that would be the best practices for running crons if you need to horizontally scale your Strapi instances. Thanks for checking out this video and hope you enjoyed.